Welcome back everybody, in this video we'll be looking at how you can make the random dungeons in your games. When you go through that door it takes you into one of three different uh, levels and I've copied and pasted the slugs around uh, and I've also made a new enemy, it's a fire imp and it just follows you down. It just chases you down and obviously you can put down the bomb and hopefully it will kill it. There it goes. Yeah so uh, Oh, also, once you get to the 4th or 5th level, uh, it takes you to a special one that will always be that level. Um, and just like in Stardew Valley, when you go down into the mine, the, you, you know what to expect on some le levels because there's a chest waiting for you. And because it is random, uh, you can often get the same thing twice, uh, the same uh, dungeon twice, uh, but hopefully... If you if you have enough uh, different dungeons in your game, then that won't matter. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like this one has come up multiple times in a row, but that's just the uh, that's just how randomness works. It won't be the same every time. Uh, and this is the uh, special level that comes up on the fifth one, uh, and you see there's just the fire imps, and there's a different level. Yeah, and when we lose our health, then we come back to the start, just like we uh, expected. Uh, so I'll uh, talk you through how I did this. So obviously it starts with making the artwork for the each of the levels. If we zoom out, uh, you see I've made four different new levels. Uh, if we hide the uh, collision, you can see it better. Uh, they're just using the same tile set as before. I've just painted them around different shapes, make sure I can get the player for each bit. And then the special level, I've made it so there's a little altar that might uh, act as a healing station and uh, there's all the different enemies. So the main piece of work I've done is I've set up this uh, trigger to add one to this value called current dungeon. Uh, so every time we walk into this thing and this same bit is copied and pasted onto each of these levels. Uh, and so what it will do is check for level five and if it is then it takes you to that special one and that will be the only time you play in this in this level. Uh, obviously, every time you die, we need to make it so the levels go back to zero, and I haven't done that yet. If the value isn't five, then it takes it to this group, and in this group we just make it so it sets a random value between one and three, uh, and for each one of those values, it takes you to each of these scenes. So obviously it means that this scene can take you back to this scene, uh, this scene can take you back to the scene, whatever. Uh, you can see the intersecting paths um, and it's very simple. Uh, obviously, the more different dungeons you have, the more random it will feel. Uh, but free, obviously, isn't that random. Uh, and I've also made sure that I've copied and pasted these, um, you know, the heart value, the uh, health values across. I've also made it so that the, the bomb comes with it as well, so that uh, the player can use the bomb. And I've also set up the uh, initiate on scene initiate the right stuff. I put the bomb into a custom, a custom event just like I did with the bone swing um, and I've made sure that on the group uh, player hits that uh, the right stuff happens. The most work I've done for this is copy and pasting these annoying slugs around uh, and the reason is because each of the their values here you see how it says slug 2 um, they, when you copy and paste them it says self in brackets and if you copy and paste it between levels, then it br uh, it breaks basically because it's trying to reference that original slug, and uh, and the self value kind of breaks. So what I do is I make sure that I always have the correct reference directly referencing itself, rather than it saying self in brackets. It directly is referencing the actor that is its name at the very top, uh, and that's uh, that's a very important part of it because. It can just break the game. It can either just not move and be static and cut off the player's, you know, route through the level, or it can actively take control of the player, thinking that the player is the reference that it should be referencing, which is not. For the and uh, uh, these imps, I've I you basically followed my own tutorial of how to make the enemy follow you in GB Studio. Uh, I'll put that in the cards up in the top corner. Uh, so yeah, it's just the basic stuff where it checks to see where the player is, then checks where it is, and then moves it one step closer towards that position. Uh, very simple stuff. What I've planned next for 
Dead Dungeon is to have a system that lets the player choose their upgrades, and uh, as you kill the enemies, it collects XP, which in turn ups the player's stats in order to do more damage, take more damage, and I might even have it so that there's a limited number of bombs, and they uh, they have to the player has to decide when to use them. I might as well, like I said, use the altars as a save point. Uh, and I start. I might also introduce a key and locking system for the dungeon en exits and entrances, just to add a little bit more of, uh, you know, you have to explore. I might even make it so when you kill an enemy, it has a chance of dropping it, uh, which might be a good idea as well. Uh, so yeah, if you guys could tell me what you think of those ideas, that'd be great. This video isn't as long as I'd like it to be, uh, mainly because I... Uh, I messed up while recording the uh, creation of all this stuff, uh, but hopefully the short snappy nature of it means that you guys understand exactly how you can make uh, random dungeons by having uh, a mixture of literally random number generators and also having a value that counts how many times you've done that uh, in order to take you to the real levels in between those random aspects of your game. I just want to thank my patrons, they'll be up on screen right now. Uh, I really want to hear what you guys think about this. Obviously, I've kind of breezed through this, mainly because, obviously, there's not much to show. The main job that I had was copy and pasting these guys around, making the levels, putting in the collision. I'll, I'll try and make sure that next week I have a more in-depth tutorial on how I'm going to do the upgrades and the player stats increasing, and also maybe the save points. But yeah, like this video if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video.